Good afternoon. Welcome to Evansville Bible Church. Good to see everybody here. It was a wild thing going on downstairs. I wasn't able to make it, but it sounds like you guys learned a few things and had a little bit of fun with Ernie Godshall. So I'm glad you were able to do that. That's, that's great. If you're new with us, first time visitor, we'd love to speak with you. You can see me, Ernie. There's, there's plenty of people around here that can kind of get you up to speed on, uh, on what we're doing as a church, but we're glad you're here visiting. Um, it's a good thing. So I've got a lot on the plate, and I want to get through this quickly because announcements is not what we're all about. And we've got materials coming, announcement flyers. You probably got a flyer today that's going to start doing what I've been doing verbally, so I won't be doing as much of that. But, uh, but today we, we need to. But before we do, I would like to bring up Josh and Natalie Noble. Come on up. And the Becks. Bill and Vicki Beck, if you could guys could kind of, probably right here would be good. We, uh, we have four new members coming up today. They have been through the, the grilling from Ernie Godshall. Did he, did he talk to you guys? I hope so. Good. That's what I heard. Uh, so they've been interviewed. They've given us their testimonies. We love these four, and we're glad that they'll be the first members here at Evansville Bible Church. Um, and we'd like to bring them up so that you know. They, they expect them to be using their gifts amongst you and yours towards them. And as the body, we build each other up and help each other and care for each other, which I know so many of us care for one another. Hopefully all of us do. But let's, I don't know how I do this with this particular microphone. This could be a little odd. Could you stand over here a little bit, Bill? Just enough that I can kind of see you. <laughs> I need a quad focal, uh, bifocal here. Okay, so here's what we do. We bring them up. Uh, they've already, like I said, they've been interviewed. We're confident in their, as much as humans can be, in their salvation through their testimony. And so this is the next step, which is for me to ask them four questions. Very complicated. They have to say yes on each one. If you can do that and, and believe it, you guys will all four be members and I'll pray for you. So let me ask you these questions. And again, yes or something in that realm. Do you affirm that eternal life is received by grace alone, through faith alone, and Jesus Christ alone, and that you have personally trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Number two, that the Bible is God's inspired and infallible word, and you submit yourself to it as authoritative and sufficient for all matters of life and faith. That you will endeavor by God's grace to be a participating member of the body of Christ through your faithful participation in corporate worship and the use of your gifts, talents, abilities, and treasures for the good of the local body and furtherance of God's kingdom and that you are willing to live and serve in harmony with the leadership of Evansville Bible Church and to con conduct your life in such a way that is consistent with its doctrinal statement for the glory of Christ. Yes. yes. Well, with that, I would like us to welcome the nobles and the Becks as new members. Not that we haven't known and loved them for a long time, but here they are, and we're grateful that you're here with us. Let me pray. Father. Thank you that you add to your kingdom, you add to your church. Uh, these are your people, Lord. And I am so uh, honored and privileged to be able to stand up here with these four and, uh, and welcome them in as official members of Evansville Bible Church. I pray that you help them to use their gifts to think uh, high thoughts of you and for others here to look at them and, and find ways to serve them, Lord, as well uh, as your people work together using their gifts, you are glorified and honored and, and empower us to do that. So thank you for that and thank you for them as new members. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, guys. Have a seat. Oh, here, elbow bumps. I said we do elbow bumps. The only problem is I sneeze and cough. Okay, so I'm going to go through this pretty fast. we got a, a lot going on. A great service today. Um, uh, parking in the rear, it looks like people are doing that now. We're filling up fast. We are thinking 
We may need to think even sooner of putting additional parking, part of that park area next to our church, that's our property, where the swings are. We're probably gonna end up putting some new uh, parking spaces out there, but for now, as long as every, if every spot is filled front and back, then we park on the streets and we're okay with that. But I'd like the parking lot to be full first, just to be kind to our neighbors the best we can. Uh, the um, Christmas Carol pitch in. There's a bunch of food downstairs. I could smell it when I came in. So when we get done here, we will be going to the pitch in and enjoy some caroling. I think we're going to do the pitch in and then come back in here for singing. Am I right? Can somebody confirm that? No. That's not right. We are staying down. Okay, I'd heard that we might be moving up for equipment. So everything downstairs after the service. Uh, elders and deacons, I had a couple questions this week, so I thought instead of feeling the same question with a lot of folks, I wanted to address it here. I told you there's two elders, Ernie the teaching elder pastor and me the other elder. We have three deacons. As a matter of fact, after the first of the year, we'll have two more deacons. We're also working towards, uh, looking towards uh, adding elders. We are an elder-led church, should not be two elders for a long period of time, but we want to bring in the right men that God chooses uh, for that position. So, so meanwhile, until we have more elders, we make decisions. It's not Ernie and I in the back room going, okay, what do we want to do? We, we are involving the deacons and other men that have been helpful uh, with our finances, we're building a budget, bring the deacons in. So you have multiple leaders looking at things and finance people. So we have Ron Herm uh, and uh, Angie Meeks helping. They, Angie just finished the budget. It's like 99% done. We'll show that to you soon. But just so you know, we're doing that. Uh, multiple leaders that are, that are helping here. Also, mission support. We've had a couple questions there. We will have mission support starting in March in our budget. We put a pretty good significant amount of money, but we need to see, give us a couple months under the belt to see how the offerings are and, and the overall budget, but we feel pretty comfortable that come March, we're gonna start supporting missionaries, and we are looking for new missionaries, and we're gonna be reaching out and find missionaries that really align with our doctrine, right, with our theology, and that'll be coming soon. We'll give you more info on that. The uh, Announcements. You probably all got one of these. We're starting to put some stuff on paper. If you didn't, you should have because they were handing them out as you came in. And this is just the next, you know, I don't know, eight or nine big events that are coming, including today's. So you can quickly look and go, okay, this is what's happening. And the details on the PPA. If you're not on our church PPA, what is that? Prayer, praise, and announcements? Is that right? Uh, you can sign up in the foyer or get hold of Carolyn and, or Carolyn, Mary Ann, and you can uh, get weekly announcements with more detail from us. And our website has a lot on it. Do, 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 let's see, AM service is in January, you know that. The first Sunday in January, I'm gonna go through this quick. Small group signups, right out the door. There's a lot of signups out there right now. So go out and look at those tables. If you wanna be in a small group, you can sign up. Ernie's got a group. I've got a group. I think Clay Sharp now has a group out on the table, all starting in January. Uh, there's a ladies' Bible study. Sign-up's not there, but I think you can go to, to Mary Ann and, and, and sign up. Or on the ladies' fa uh, uh, Facebook page, you can sign up. Uh, Habakkuk is the study starting, I think, January 21st. And there's a morning and an evening child care in the morning. I think that's correct. Directory. You guys see directories out there, the right in the, between the doors, and you'll want to grab one of those because that'll tell you who you're sitting next to, which is good. <laughs> that would be good. It's good to have that. Uh, membership renewal form. Keith will point them out. If you were a mem previous member, you want to be a member of Evansville Bible Church in our new location, it's one page, a little information a signature agreeing with some basics, really probably what we just read to the new members, and you can uh, become a member. So there are no squiggly lines on here. Remember the squiggly lines for members? We took them off. Only way you get your squiggly line back is to do this. 
And so we would recommend in the next week or two, today if you can, to fill those out, put them in the basket, become a member. Uh, lastly, the uh, new members class, if you're not a member and you want to be, in March we'll start a newcomers class and at the end of that you can decide to become a member of Evansville Bible Church. Did I get everything? Oh, one last thing. There's it out on the table. If you want a complete calendar, we just finished it through August. This has all kinds of information of what's going on at Evansville Bible Church, again, out on the table. So that's it. I'm going to pray for us, and we're going to get into the worship. Father, thank you for this great day, uh, for your people gathering together, worshiping you in music and in the preaching of the word. I pray that your spirit would be with us as it always is. Father, to give us great wisdom and calm our hearts to think of you, to worship you, and to be single-minded just for a time, uh, for the next hour or so, Lord, to really give our hearts to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Please stand as we're going to worship our Lord and our King.
Our scripture reading today comes from Luke. We're going to read Luke chapter 2. You can open your Bibles so you can follow with me. Luke 2. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinius was governor of Syria. And all went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with the child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in the swaddling cloths and laid him in the manger because there was no place for them in the inn. And in the same region, there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over the flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. And an angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be the sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in the swaddling cloths and laying in the manger. And suddenly there was with an angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among those, those with whom he is pleased. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see those things that has happened, which his Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in the manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up all those things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. Let us pray together. We come to you this afternoon, our Heavenly Father. We want to give you honor and give you praise. We want to acknowledge that you are the only one true God, the creator of heaven and on earth. You created everything that exists in this universe. Everything belongs to you. We know also that you created everything for yourself and everything that exists, exists to bring you glory. You also created us for yourself so we could glorify your name every moment of our existence. We acknowledge that we often fail to do this. We come to your throne of grace right now and we wanna bow down and ask you to forgive us we want to confess that we are sinners, even though we are redeemed, but we sin against you often. Please cleanse us from all our unrighteousness and ungodliness, which polluting our souls and dishonor you. Cleanse us by your blood. Prepare our hearts to receive your word. We want to thank you that before foundation of the world, you had a plan for our salvation. And this afternoon, we want to remind ourselves that big event, the greatest event in the history, when you entered into this physical realm to be like us. As one writer said, we want to thank you, Jesus, for coming to unlock our prison of sin and redeeming us. We want to thank you that you left your glories of heaven and came down to this broken world and became a servant. We thank you that you took our punishment and became a substitute, and you took our place and been punished with our sins on the cross. We also want to thank you that you live perfect, righteous life on this earth, that whoever believes in you could receive it, perfect, sinless life as a gift from you, and be accepted by your Father. 
We ask your blessing on this hour, that our worship would be pleasing aroma to you. Encourage those who are broken. Give hope to those who are hopeless. Strengthen those who are weak. Minister to us through your powerful word. I ask all this in your precious name. Amen. Please stand as we're going to continue worship together.
shining it is the night of our dear Savior's birth long lay the world in sin and error pining till he appeared and the soul felt its worth a thrill For yonder breaks a new and glorious morn. Fall on your knees. Oh, hear the angel voices. Oh, night divine. was born oh night divine oh night oh night divine true taught us to love one another his law is love and his gospel is peace chain shall he break for the slave is our brother and in his name all the prayer Praise his holy name, Christ is the Lord. Oh, praise his name forever, his power and glory. And go. 
Thank you, Jacqueline. Well done and a beautiful hymn. Amazing. <clears throat> Good to see everybody this afternoon. We only have one more Sunday to say this afternoon. Is that right? One more Sunday. Yes, and then it will be the first of, second of January. Praise the Lord. All right, we are in the midst of Christmas. And, uh, you know, one time I didn't preach on Christmas when it was Christmas Sunday. And I was told, you know, that you, shouldn't, you should always preach on Christmas, on the birth of Christ somehow on Christmas. And I agree. And so we're going to step out of Colossians and we're going to be coming over to Luke that um, Alex so wonderfully read for us. I wish I could read like that. But anyway, let's pray. We do have some people still sick, some people still even with the COVID. You know, it seems like from our perspective, man, that's all long gone and we're into the new thing, but we're not. There's still people that have COVID and people in our church. So we're going to pray for them and for our country. Let's pray together. Our Father, we, we praise and thank you for, number one, the, the, the themes of these songs that we have sung this morning about Christ, about the birth of Christ. Lord, thank you that you ha we have all of these wonderful, doctrinally sound uh, hymns that teach us about you and lead us into praising you for who you are as our Lord and Savior. We thank you that you are the majestic, glorious God. And Father, we do thank you that too you do uh, heal your people. We pray for those who are sick right now, that you would encourage them. We thank you for the health that you have restored to many of us. But we do pray for those who are still struggling with the issues of uh, sickness. And so we pray for them. Uh, we, we, do pr we pray, even though Right now, we aren't directly supporting missionaries. Many of us on our own are supporting missionaries, but we certainly pray for missionaries that we do know, and many of us can think of families, and we pray that they might be encouraged through this time of Christmas. Sometimes it's hard when you're way off in a foreign field, and you know that Christmas is taking place back home. And so we pray that you will keep their hearts encouraged, bless their ministry, bless their, their uh, efforts, like the gospel that they're preaching. And we do pray, Lord, for our church. We pray for this church that you will help us to stay close to you, that we will grow, we will become more and more like Christ, that you will bless your churches around the world that are faithful to the scriptures. And we do pray for each family here. We pray for our teenagers. Lord, thank you for them. Thank you for their, 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 their enthusiasm about life. And many of them have trusted Christ. We pray for those that haven't, that you would draw their hearts to you. We pray for the young children. Thank you for them. We, Lord, we uh, pray for uh, our country. We pray for those in authority, that you would help them to have good sense, that, the, that peace might continue in this world, that the gospel can go forth. So now we commit our time to, in your word to you. Do your work in our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. So I'm going to be... Right there in Luke chapter 2 for most of uh, this message this morning, starting off with verses 10 and 11, the angel said to them, the shepherds, fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy. Right there, that's the theme, great joy, that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. Some things are almost impossible to imagine. Imagine America without the Bible. Imagine America without Christianity. Imagine world history without the birth of Christ. Our secular atheistic culture would love to cancel Christmas, indeed all of Christianity. They don't like it. They'd like to get, out, get it out of our national consciousness. There would be no angelic announcement to Mary, no trip to Bethlehem, no birth, no manger, no shepherds. You can't imagine it, can you? No, we can't. Some things are just impossible to imagine. Now, our passage about the birth of Christ that we heard this morning is grounded in history. It's not this upper-level 
uh, non-historical story. It's grand. It all happened just as your Bible tells you. There was a Caesar in Rome who did decree a census. The young couple did make their way from a literal Nazareth town down to Bethlehem, about 90 miles. There was no comfortable room for them. So out to the barn they went, and that night... Uh, the, the, the young lady brought forth a son, and they laid him in a manger. A- angels literally did appear to those shepherds, announcing the birth of this child in the midst of brightness and heavenly glory. And those shepherds made haste to see and return with hearts nearly exploding with praise and rejoicing for what they had seen there in Bethlehem. And what a night that was. Now, for most people sleeping in Bethlehem that night, it was just another night. But as we know, this was not just another night. Mary gave birth not just to a baby boy, but to the seed of David, the future king of Israel, the savior of the world. She, gave, she just gave birth to the God-man, a miracle Mystery beyond understanding. Even the angels couldn't stay in heaven. They came in heavenly glory to those shepherds to declare that good news of great joy. A Savior is born. What makes Christmas so full of great joy? I think we could say even the greatest joy. The greatest joy of all. The Magi experienced it in Matthew 2. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. So this morning we're going to tear into some things that make Christmas a time of great joy. Several reasons for this great joy. Kind of like ripping into a Christmas gift to see what's in there and you're happy when you got what you got. So I've got four things that are reasons for great joy in Christmas with the birth of Christ. Number one is the great joy of the prophecy that's fulfilled in the birth of Christ. Galatians 4.4 says, But when the fullness of time had come, the firstborn, uh, the fullness of time had come, excuse me, God sent forth his son. Born of a woman, born under the law. Luke 2.7, And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. Now, Daniel lived around 550 B.C., before this event. God revealed to Daniel, and he wrote it down in Daniel chapter 2 and Daniel chapter 7, that there would be three world empires that would arise after Babylon. The first was Persia, that huge bear, and sure enough, The Persians sneaked in on the Babylonians and crushed them. Daniel prophesied about another strong kingdom that would arise, the leopard that would leap out of the east, out of Greece, and go into the east, smashing those Persians. Sure enough, 311 B.C., 331 B.C., Alexander the Great did exactly that. He marched his armies across that ancient world, and all the way to India, actually, and fulfilled prophecy, 331 B.C. And then a fourth empire, Daniel said, would arise, one greater than all of these. And sure enough, it happened. In Luke 2, 1, that decree that went out from Caesar Augustus went out from an empire that he headed up. Guess what that empire was? It was the Roman Empire. Now, who's in control of history? Who is sovereign? Who is revealing history hundreds of years before it happens? In Daniel chapter 9, Daniel had an even more specific prophecy. He said, in 483 years after a decree from the Persians to rebuild Jerusalem, Isaiah's Messiah Israel's Messiah would come 483 years. Did he come? Yes, he did. He came right on time. You're looking at him in the manger, Mary tending to him, 
fulfilled prophecy, hundreds of years after the prophecies were made. And so it happened just as God said it would. Christmas is the story of the great joy of fulfilled prophecy. It also proves the existence of God, okay? Now, there are more. There are more. We're not going to take a whole lot of time, but there are more. Isaiah prophesied in Isaiah chapter 7 that a virgin would conceive and bear a child. Did a virgin conceive and bear a child? Yes, Mary's the virgin. The child is in the manger. Then in, in Isaiah chapter 9, Isaiah said, For unto you a child is born, unto you a son is given, and the government shall be on his shoulders. Was a son given? Was a child born? Yes, they were. He's that little baby in that manger there in Bethlehem. One more. Micah lived the same time as Isaiah, about 700 B.C., 700 years B.C., contemporary with Isaiah. He added this. But as for you, Bethlehem Ephrathah, too little to be among the clans of Judah, from you will go forth one who will be for me a ruler in Israel. His goings forth are from long ago, from the days of eternity. Where was Jesus born? Bethlehem, exactly. 700 years before he was born in Bethlehem, Micah prophesied about this. These are Christmas joys. What, a, what, a, what, a, what a, a, an event the birth of Christ was. Now imagine if none of this came to pass. All those prophecies were made. No Caesar, no Joseph and Mary, no trip down to Bethlehem, no manger, none of it. The Romans came, destroyed Jerusalem. Then the Germans came and destroyed the Romans. And then the Muslims rose up with Muhammad in the 600s, took over northern Africa and the Middle East. And there, was never, there were never any pilgrims coming over here to worship Christ. There were no Puritans coming over here to establish a city set on a hill. Imagine that. America never settled by Christ-loving pilgrims and Puritans. No Christmas cards. No bright lights. No celebration of Christ's birth, which we do every year. Imagine no fulfillment of these prophecies, that they were empty words, just useless drivel. What a dark world this would be. You imagine it. We can't imagine it. And yet there are those who would like to get rid of it. God's words aren't empty, and one of the great joys of Christmas is that he kept his promises from hundreds of years before, words that are faithful and true, and we're looking at the fulfillment right there in Luke verse, chapter 2, verse 7. By the way, he did promise that he's coming back again. If he came the first time right on target, right on schedule, then he's going to come back the second time. So I have a question for you. Are you ready for him to come back? Because he could come back at any time. If he came the first time, right on schedule, we don't know when he's coming. He didn't tell us that, but he's coming. Be ready. Second great joy of Christmas, God's sovereign providence displayed in the birth of Christ. Luke 2, 1. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. Now, why did Caesar call for a census at this time? Why did Joseph and Mary have to make their way down to Bethlehem just at this time? Why was Mary just at the point of having to deliver her baby? This is one of the clear examples in the scripture of God's good providence. God's providence, which means his control of all things, it's his invisible hand behind everything that happens, his providence assures us that all of his prophecies will be fulfilled because he's in charge. Regarding Caesar Augustus and the census, listen to Proverbs 21.1. The king's heart is in the hands of the Lord, and he turns it wherever he chooses. God's providence brought Caesar to make that declaration. God had everything prepared for the birth of Christ. 
Even from the Greek language we talked about in the other the earlier hour, even the Greek language, God made sure that that world was had the Greek language spread throughout so that when the New Testament came along, people could read it. God made sure that the Roman Empire had established peace so that when Jesus came, there was basically peace. Roman had, him, it had uh, brought its peace around the world called the Pax Romana. And now here's this top gun of, Roman, of the Roman Empire decreeing this census so that Joseph and Mary would make their way to Bethlehem, the city of David. Let me just ask you a question of providence. Everything in your life is the outworking of the providence of God. Now, a lot of things in our lives are very small. Yesterday, though, I heard a story about someone who worked somewhere. I don't want to get too specific here. And another worker that was there knew the Lord and threw some three-by-five cards. Both her husband and she came to know the Lord. Now, why was that man there at that place working? And why, did, why was that woman working there at the same time? and that she would be able to be introduced. That's the providence of God. That's the grace of God. I hope somebody's been in your life like that. You can look back and say, oh, I can see it. I can see God working out his plan. It was the fullness of time, as Galatians uh, 4 told us. History was right for the birth of Christ. Listen to R.C. Sproul. He says this, quote, Jesus was born at the precise second and in the precise place that God had ordained from the foundation of the world. Amazing. That's a, there's great joy in God's sovereign providence seen in the birth of Christ. Thirdly, there's the great joy of the people that God chose in the birth of Christ. Just look at the people in these verses that I'm going to read to you. And Joseph went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And in the same region there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. I love this about God, the people that he chooses. He hasn't chosen many mighty. I mean, even when Jesus came, he did not come into a palace. He, didn't, he wasn't laid in a cradle, bejeweled with all kinds of... Uh, rich uh, stones of all sorts. He wasn't treated by an army of nurses when he was born. No, he was born in a stable. He was laid in a feeding trough of all things. God doesn't choose the elite of the world. He does some. There were some magi, okay? So if you're one of the elite, praise the Lord, because he does choose some elites. But mostly he chooses people with, whose feet are on the ground. You know, their legs reach to the ground. They're just common people like Joseph. Who was Joseph? He was a carpenter. Joseph was a man who made a living working with his hands. Look at Mary. Who was Mary? An unknown teenager, a Jewess. When they show up in town, as far as we can tell, no one knows they're there. They have no clout to get them a nice room, or a midwife, or a physician. They're just humble, obscure, poor people. These are the kind of people that God chooses. Not the upper crust, which my father always said was a, lot, was a bunch of crumbs held together with some dough, <laughs> which is utterly irrelevant to this sermon. <laughs> they were gracious people, though, Joseph was so gracious that he was going to put Mary away privately when he found out she was with child. Gracious. And Mary, she was gracious. When she was told by the angel about that she would be bearing this child, how can this be? And when she was told by the angel how it would be, she said, be it unto me according to your word. I hope all you young girls in this room have that same heart attitude, like, be it unto me. Just sweet words. She submitted 
to God in that time. And then these shepherds. Shepherds were not great people. In fact, they were pretty much the down and outers and the outcasts of society. One author said, and if I can find it here, shepherds in Israel were considered untrustworthy and their work made them ceremonially unclean. Thus, the most obvious implication is that the gospel first came to social outcasts of Jesus' day. You don't have to be royalty or a celebrity or the upper crust to know Jesus. No, Christ came for people like Joseph and Mary, you and me, these shepherds. What a great joy just to see the people God chose to be part of Christmas. Then fourth, and greatest joy of all, joy of fulfilled prophecy, divine providence, common people, the greatest joy of all is the person and purpose declared in the birth of Christ. Verses 10 and 11. And the angel said to them, the shepherds, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. I want to look at these verses phrase by phrase to, f- to finish up here this morning or this afternoon. I bring you good news. That's the gospel. Do you know the gospel? Do you know what the gospel is all about? He didn't bring them bad news. He brought them good news. If God wasn't merciful, he could have easily brought them bad news that we're all under the wrath of God and destined for hell. But no, he brought them good news, the gospel, that news that would make a difference in millions of people's lives, change hearts, that good news of Christ coming, living, dying, rising again so that we could have eternal life. I bring you good news. It'll bring us forgiveness, eternal life, adoption into God's family. Of great joy, he says. Good news of great joy. That's the effect of the gospel. The brightness. What is joy? The brightness of spirit. I mean, it's a dark world if you remove Christ in the Bible and Christianity. That's what the secular world is looking for. The darkness of a world without God. They have no idea what they're talking about. Great joy. Pure hope. The world has joys. They do. But they're so limited. Marriages, some turn out sour. But they're limited. Births, often there's heartache with children, graduation, that's fun, that's good, a raise, passing your finals, the joys of trusted friendships, it's all very good, learning new things, traveling, seeing new places, paying off your debts, these are all good things and things that bring us joy, but nothing close to the joy that this good news of Christ would bring. And it's which which shall be for all the people, it says. This is a There is a divine love, think about this, there is a divine love packed into this brief phrase, which shall be for all the people. First Israel, then the Gentiles, for all whom God calls to himself. Do you want proof of God's love for us? Look at the manger. If God didn't love us, If God didn't love sinners, there would be no Christ laying in that manger. Christ in that manger proves that God loves sinners. God demonstrated his own love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. For unto you is born this day in the city of David. Historical, not a myth, not an ancient Greek or Roman God, but this very day. This day, there is, one is born, rooted historically to King David himself. Nothing mystical, nothing superstitious here. Just like creation in time and space, so here we have Jesus in real time and space. You could have felt his warm little body laying in that manger. If you went to visit him, you would have smelled maybe the manure in the barn. You may have heard roosters crowing or hens cackling. There he was. You could have 
You could have actually gone up to him and you could have pinched his little cheeks. Now, we have some cheek pinchers among us, especially the ladies. They just can't help but pinching those little cheeks. Not hard, just... Well, you could have pinched Jesus' little cheeks because he was really there. This is not just a story. And then, best of all, as Luke, as these angels actually unfold this, for unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. He came as our Savior. He didn't come as our example, although he's the best example there is, but that's not why he came. He didn't come just to do works of power and miracles and that kind of thing. He came to be our Savior, a Savior which is Christ the Lord, a Savior to save us from our dreadful condition under sin, under the curse of sin, to save us from Satan's rulership over our lives, to save us from spending eternity, listen to this, eternity, that's a long time, to save us from spending eternity under the awful punishment of divine wrath that we deserved because we have sinned against God. He came to save us from our sins. That's the gospel. That's the greatest joy of all. Born to die for sinners. A Savior who is Christ the Lord. Who is he? God united with man one person two natures yes hypostatically united one person two natures fully god fully man to unite with us to grow and live and walk among us this is mystery of mysteries miracle of miracles there's nothing greater to grow and live and walk among us and then finally to pay that ultimate price that we deserve to, pr- to pay, dying in our place. These are the great joys of Christmas. Prophecy fulfilled hundreds of years beforehand. Providence revealed if God wasn't in control, those prophecies would have never come, come to pass. The people, Joseph, Mary, shepherds, and then the person, Jesus Christ. And for all who receive him as Savior, there's great joy. And your joy, if you are a Christian, your joy will increase forever and ever. Heaven is a place of pure love and a place of pure joy. Brightness of spirit. The greatest tragedy really, the greatest tragedy is to hear this story and never respond to it in faith. Can you think of a greater tragedy than that? To hear this familiar story and yet in your heart never expressing, I believe that, I believe in Jesus. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, believe in your hearts that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Let's pray together. I'm just going to give us a little time of silent prayer. We heard so many beautiful things this morning, or this afternoon. Oh, holy night, the scripture reading that we've heard. Let's just talk to God, each one of us, ourselves. And if you're here, you've never really reached out in faith and trusting Christ as your Lord and Savior. It's a good time to do it right now. Just talk to him. So I'm going to give us a little time in silent prayer, and then we'll, I'll close. Father, thank you. Thank you for, from eternity past, planning to bring your son into this world uniting forever with us, us human beings, joining the human race, not as a sinner, but joining the human race so that you could save us as sinners. Lord, may this Christmas time
time. Help us to meditate, think about even these songs. We can go read the, 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 the uh, lyrics of these songs. They're rich and give you all the praise and all the glory. Thank you for your Son, our Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Please stand as we have finished our service. Thank you, Jesus, that you came to our world to bring us great joy. Thank you for this reminder that you, what you said in your word, you will fulfill. You said that you will come back to take us into heaven, that where we're going to be with you forever and ever. And this is great joy. You reminded us that you sovereignly orchestrate every event in our life. There is no accidents. It's divine appointments. Thank you that you're reminding us that you love humble people, simple people. Remove pride from our hearts. And help us to focus this season on you, Jesus Christ. What you did for us. That we would be filled with joy when world around us, around us in darkness and there's pain and there is tears, we can be ready to serve and ready to talk about your salvation. Please save even this moment some people who don't know you. In Jesus' name, amen. You dismissed.